Okay, so I've got the Anderson easel as usual, and I'm painting on a 14 by 18 inch panel. My usual palette of colors. Uh, Arias over here with his Pochade box, and he's also got a 14 by 18 inch panel. And we're, we're gonna try to do something with this scene here. Definitely gonna be challenging. Do you tone too, or no? Yeah, I usually do. I might actually tone today with a dark color. I'm not sure if that's wise, but I have problems with the consistencies of the grays across. Oh, yeah. like, so I kind of might just put a general gray and then maybe do like a burnt umber, burnt, a burnt sienna. sienna. Burnt oh, okay. Sienna. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, a while. Yeah, yeah, burnt sienna sketch? Yeah, burnt sienna sketch, yeah. Okay, cool. You just kind of mopped on some gray and now you're erasing some highlights more or less? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to get some shapes of clouds and I usually make them too rigid so I'm trying to just keep it loose. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll do that like with the water. Let's take a look. Yeah, it looks great. Very cool. Thank you, sir. All right, so here's the scene we're working with. I'm gonna probably put the horizon at like say two thirds from the top and then just have some sort of cloud arrangement um, but as you can see, it's really, really bright out there, so it's kind of hard to photograph. Uh, one key thing that I like to do, or you know, keep in mind when painting skies, is to keep the value uh, as light as possible. Even the dark portions of the clouds up here are, are lighter um, than the dark portions of the waves, for example. So here is the compositional idea. Like I said, the water will be at the bottom third. And actually the clouds, the darker clouds, I'm gonna have them kind of coming down on an angle a little bit. In reality, they're kind of straight across, but I think having some, uh, you know, some diagonals in here is gonna be important because there's a lot of horizontals, like obviously the horizon and then the waves, that sort of thing. All right, so I'm mixing up some color for the water and I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and a little bit of this leftover um, burnt sienna to kind of push it towards green. And I'm going with a value that's slighter, slightly darker than mid-tone value. Um, and as I mentioned before, my palette is a mid-tone value, so I'm using that to gauge uh, the value of this color. Mixing in a bit of liquid to thin it. All right, so the question is where to put that first wave. And in reality, you know, the, big, the bigger waves are kind of right about in the middle. I don't want to do that. That's going to leave too much uh, sort of uninteresting areas. Like this area, the water will not have any action. So I'm going to put the wave a little higher than I'm actually seeing it. And I just want it to be like sort of random shapes. Uh, you can see this is kind of like a nice blue-green to start with. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And this area here will be more like the, uh, the white water or the flat water that's reflecting the sky color. Okay, so I've mixed up the color for the dark portion of the waves, uh, but when the waves break, the white water is also pretty dark. Um, you know, when the waves just break. And I know I've mentioned this a lot, but I, the key is to keep your, you know, uh, keep the shapes in the water to be very irregular. A lot of times, you know, when we first start painting waves, it's all too perfect. All right, so looking at this, I feel like I want more of a broken wave here, a kind of a bigger one. Maybe a little bit, a little bit over here as well. So again, keeping the bottom and the top of the wave very irregular in shape.
So for the portions in between the waves, those are going to be reflecting sky color, which is sort of a bluish. Kind of experimented a little bit here with um, actually just some of the color I used for the breaking waves, um, but I added some titanium white to it. Uh, I want this color to be dark enough, the surface of the water to be dark enough that it allows for me to put some really bright pops, uh, you know, highlights on the water or glare. So, you know, so this has got to be dark enough that the, the glare or the, you know, titanium white with a touch of yellow is going to show up as glare. Okay, so the next color I'm mixing is for the sand here. I'm using titanium white, yellow ochre, and I'm graying it with a bit of uh, dioxazine purple. This color needs to be dark enough that the white water here or the reflections, uh, the sky reflected in the water here, um, seems really bright. So this is kind of a dull gray, almost not even yellow anymore. That's all right. If I want to warm it up, I can. Right now, I'm just mostly looking for the right value. Right where the sand meets the water is a little bit darker, so I've added a little extra dioxazine purple. Um, you know, right where the wet sand meets the dry sand. Okay, so now I'm mixing up a color for some of the white water using uh, dioxazine purple and titanium white. Again, keeping the value fairly light here. And, and also keeping the patterns irregular as possible. But lots of sun coming out here. So for some of the glare, I'm using titanium white and cadmium yellow lemon. And as I mentioned, I wanted to keep the values of the water dark enough so that these little bits of light will show up. You've got to keep the paint uh, fairly thick. Things were not working out, so I had to switch over to this number 10 bright, load it up, and uh, you know, put on this yellow here, the, the sort of glare on the water. Um, but it was still not bright enough, so then um, I had to darken the surrounding areas to make the yellow stand out more. How's it going over here? It's tough. tough. Oh, damn, I like that already. Oh, thank you. I love the abstract sort of, you know, nature of it. Lots of nice energy and color in the waves. It is, it's, it's tough. It's really tough, but it it's, tough. It's, a, it's a fun exercise though, for sure. For sure, for sure. You know? I just need to, I'm seeing too, I'm trying to get too many colors in. I need to kind of like... Simplify the color yes. scheme? Yeah, bring the color scheme a little bit back together. That's what I'm gonna try to do in the end here. It's looking like you got really nice harmony though. To, I mean, it looks like to me, there's a nice balance between these green, greens and purples. So, I like it. Yeah, I know. I haven't. It looks like you haven't done your sky done either. Sky I'm like, all, yeah. the water's enough to deal yeah, with. I, know, I yeah. feel like if I can get that, then you know the sky's kind of right. Whatever. Right. Yeah.
All right, so I'm gonna stop right here. I ended up leaving a lot of the underpainting just because I liked the orange that was showing through. But again, the key was to try to get a convincing and feeling of light on the water and glare and everything. So that is it. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> Looks awesome. Yeah, I love all that thick paint and energy, you know? Thank you, sir. Yeah, very beautiful. All right, so it was a great time painting with Araya. I will link his Instagram in the description below. Also, if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. I've got a bunch of other videos on there, materials list, that sort of thing. Uh, so if that sounds interesting, check it out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.